Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white Hilda of the IC Crown deck, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This deck is going to try to tap opposing creatures down and then reap the rewards. So unlike a typical blue-white control deck that's going to try to wipe the board and take over with our Planeswalkers, we actively want the opponent to have a few creatures in play so we can play with them and then activate Hilda's various abilities. A 4-mana 3-4 saying whenever we tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, we can pay 1 mana. When we do, either create a 4-4 elemental token, that's the mode we're going to choose most often, we can also get a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, or we can scry two and then draw a card, that's probably the second most used mode. So Hilda has some incredibly powerful effects for just one mana, but of course we do need to jump through quite a few hoops, we need to play Hilda, she needs to survive, our opponent needs to have an untapped creature that we can then tap down, because if they're already tapped then we can't enable Hilda, and then we also need to pay the one. So to make that happen I've split up the deck into a few different categories. In the first column we've got our mana acceleration, ways to build up our mana so we can hopefully play Hilda, tap something down and also pay the one extra mana all in one turn to get immediate value. Then we've got our tap engines, these are cards that can repeatedly tap opposing creatures down so we can keep getting value from Hilda turn after turn, as well as of course keep the opponent's creatures in check. And then we've got some one-shot tap effects that often replace themselves by drawing a card or have some other effects stapled onto them. Then we've got the protection package, ways to give Hilda hexproof or indestructible to protect her from opposing removal spells. We also have some counter spells to protect Hilda and maybe counter some key cards from the opponent. And then we've got some additional removal effects. Of course we don't want to overdo it since we still want the opponent to have some creatures left that we can play with, tap down and get our value. But ways to maybe destroy a tapped creature has good synergy in this deck. And cards like Cyclonic Rifts and Rivers Rebuke can also bail us out if we're in a tough spot. And then at the miscellaneous section has some additional card draw effects. Brainstorm has a good synergy with a scry to and draw from Hilda, as we can put some bad cards on top and then describe them to the bottom of our deck. And then some uh, staples like Time Warp and Teferi also play quite well in this strategy. Now taking a closer look at our mana acceleration section, we actually start with a card that doesn't technically ramp us, but land tax is still great to ensure every land drop for the rest of the game. If the opponent has some more lands than we do in our upkeep, we get to search our library for three basic lands and put them in hand. So as long as we're not actually putting additional lands into play and just ramping with our artifacts, as long as we're on the draw or maybe skip a land drop for a turn, this can essentially draw us three lands turn after turn, which can of course thin out the deck so we ensure better top decks later in the game. And then our two mana ramp artifacts include Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the new Iron Crag. So we now actually have five two mana ramp artifacts we can play most decks. And at three mana there's Midnight Clock which can eventually refresh our hand. Replicating Ring can eventually make eight copies of itself that add a mana of any color, so that can also give us a huge mana boost in the late game. The Celestus gives us some card selection as it switches between day and night. Worn Power Stone can make two colorless mana if we untap with it. Same with Hedron Archive at four mana, that can immediately tap for mana to maybe play another artifact afterwards or pay for Hilda's ability. And then there's a Gilded Lotus making three mana of any one color. And then we continue with our tap engines and I first want to highlight some of the artifacts that can repeatedly tap stuff down. We've got the classic Icy Manipulator, four mana to play, one mana to activate, to tap an artifact, creature or land. So could even tap an opposing land in the opponent's upkeep to essentially deny one mana. We also have Hilda's Crown of Winter, this one only taps opposing creatures down, but can be free to activate in our turn, one mana to activate in the opponent's turn. Could also be sacrificed to draw extra cards equal to the number of tapped creatures the opponent controls, but for the most part we want to just keep it around to enable Hilda. And then there's the Icebind Pillar, which requires a snow mana to activate to tap an artifact or creature. So that's why we have all these snow-covered basics in the mana base to enable Pillar, as well as to animate our Faceless Haven, one of our creature lanes. And then we also have Pacification Area as another cheap artifact, only one to play, and then a two mana to activate to tap an artifact or a creature. Then we also have some one mana creatures to do the job. We've got Giant Killer, which can first use the Chop Down Adventure, destroy a larger creature, and then two mana to activate to tap a creature down. Laruna Enforcer has a restriction of only tapping creatures with mana value 2 or greater, but that's usually not a concern. 
And then the Elvish Mariners, pretty unique, 3-mana, uh, 3-2, three, when it attacks we get to scry 1, and whenever we scry we can tap up to X, target non-land permanents, where X is the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. So let's say we attack with a Mariner, we tap one opposing creature down, but the opponent might still have multiple blockers left. Well, by scrying and tapping something down, we get to potentially pay 1, and then use the scry 2 and then draw effect from Hilda, to once again tap multiple things down with a Mariner, rinse and repeat, and most of the opponent's stuff will be tapped down, and we'll have drawn a lot of extra cards with Hilda's ability. Then we also have the Ice Rod Sentry, which is 3 to play, 2 3 Vigilance. When it attacks, we can pay 1 and a blue. When we do, we get to tap target creature and opponent controls. And then whenever we tap an untapped creature and opponent controls, the Sentry gets plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn. So that also includes ways of tapping opposing creatures down besides its own ability. So we can potentially activate it multiple times if we tap down multiple opposing creatures. Then there's a Verity Circle, another very nice payoff, saying whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, we may draw a card. So this even applies to opposing mana creatures that tap for mana, which will also draw us a card. And then for 5 mana, it is pretty pricey, but we can tap a creature down without flying. So that can also be a way to repeatedly tap creatures down if we don't have a cheaper effect. And then there's the Dream Shackle Geist, 3 mana, 3-2 three, flyer, has been upgraded from a 3-1 through alchemy. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can either tap a creature down or target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So both can be useful. And then a Teferi who slows the sunset is one of my favorite cards in this deck. The plus one being incredibly versatile. We can tap or untap a land, artifact or creature. And we can choose between the opponent's stuff and our stuff. So we can maybe untap an artifact we control and a land, netting us a ton of extra mana. But we can also tap an opposing creature down to enable Hilda's synergies. And then a minus two and minus seven offer even more utility. And then a Frost Titan, a recent addition through Historic Anthology, a 6-6, and when it enters a battlefield or attacks, it can tap any opposing permanent down, including potentially the opponent's lanes, and they won't untap in the next untap step. And then it also has a bit of built-in protection, essentially has a Ward 2 before Ward existed. And then a Junkwinder is also very fun in this list, has affinity for tokens, so it gets a discount for every 4-4 elemental or other token we might have. And then whenever a token enters a battlefield under our control, we get to tap an opposing non-land permanent down, and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So what happens if we have Junkwinder and Hilda? We get to potentially tap something down with a different effect, make a 4-4 token, which triggers Junkwinder, pay the 1, and then make another token after tapping another creature down, rinse and repeat until the opponent's out of untapped creatures. And then we go to our one-shot tap effects, starting with Feeling of Dread, which can be flashed back and can tap two target creatures down. And then we've got multiple two-mana instants that tap a creature down and draw a card. The Plunge into Winter and Knots also let us scry one. And then there's Pressure Point and the Depose half of Depose Deploy, or we can cast Deploy to make a pair of Flying Thopter tokens. We also have Bitter Chill to keep a creature tapped down permanently, and if it gets removed we can still pay one mana to draw a card. The Sanctuary is a 3-mana enchantment that says whenever we tap an opposing creature down that's untapped, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature we control, and when the Sanctuary enters, it also gets to tap down a creature that will stay tapped for a turn. Then there's Scroll of Isildur, which can start by stealing an opposing artifact. On Chapter 2, we can tap two creatures down with stun counters, so those also won't untap for a turn cycle. And eventually we get to draw a card for each tapped creature target opponent controls, which can also get out of hand. And Sheree is also quite nice in this deck, a 4-mana 2-3, when it enters, taps an opposing creature down with a stun counter, and then whenever we tap an opposing untapped creature down, we get to draw a card, triggers once each turn, so it can also be a very powerful card draw engine alongside Hilda. The Illithid Harvester can tap multiple creatures down with the Adventure, and then when we play it, it can transform all tapped creatures we want into a 2-2 horror creature, so that can also be very effective against an opposing commander. And finally, Cura Best the Sea God, just a nice finisher, making a hexproof Kraken token. And then on Chapter 2, can tap everything down. Chapter 3, steal the opponent's best card. Then moving on to the protection category, we've got Giver of Runes and Skrelf that the opponent's gonna have to answer before they can deal with Hilda. We've got a Lauren's Escape to give hexproof and indestructible at instant speed. We've got our Spell Pierce to counter non creature spells for one mana. Wash away a one mana answer to the opponent's commander for the most part. Memory Lamps and Counterspell can deal with anything, and then a Negate and Dovin's Veto for opposing non-creature spells. 
Tails End can also be used to counter opposing commanders or other legendaries. And then the boots and equipment that can be equipped for one mana, giving Hexproof and Haste can also be a nice safe haven for Hilda. And then our removal section includes a Runic Shot, just one mana to destroy a tapped creature, can also be kicked to Scry 2. Good Swords to Plowshares as another staple in any white Brawl deck. Good Cyclonic Rift and the Reverse Rebuke to potentially bounce all the opponents and all land permanents back. And then we've got a Lordon to destroy artifacts or enchantments. And Skyclave Apparition, another versatile answer to cheaper permanents. And the Wandering Emperor can exile tapped creatures with a minus two. So also has good synergy throughout. And then finally we've got our Esper Sentinel as an annoying one drop that will tax the opponent for casting non-creature spells. A Brainstorm as we mentioned, good alongside the Scry 2 and Draw effect from Hilda. Got Time Warp to take an extra turn, especially nice if we have some active Planeswalkers like our various Teferis, including Hero of Dominaria, which can plus one to draw a card and then untap two lanes, leaving up enough mana to potentially use some of our Insta Speed tap effects during the opponent's turn. And finally, Nico is a great mana sink, making a lot of shard tokens when it enters the battlefield, and we can sacrifice those for two mana to scry one and then draw, and that can also enable the minus one ability to deal more damage to a tapped creature. And then our mana base has a lot of snow basics, as we mentioned, Soaring City and Aiganjo offering additional interaction, lots of blue-white dual lands, and then a few creature lands in Faceless Haven and Mutavolt, which is very cheap to activate. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Thalia and the Gitrog monster, and our hand seems fine. We've got a couple uh, ways to protect Hilda between escape and boots, and plenty of ramp. So, could hang on to the giant killer to potentially destroy the opponent's commander, even though playing at turn one is also somewhat reasonable. Tangible virtue to pump creature tokens. Is this a tokens deck we're up against? Now, probably worth it to keep up memory lapse. And we'll send back Chatterfang. Make them play off curve. And there's Chatterfang once again, no fourth land. Okay, so I can play Hedron Archive, play Boots. Or I can hang on to chop down, but they may not find a fourth land for Thalia and the Gidrog monster. Yeah, let's just pass it back. A battle Screech making two 1-1 one -one birds and a pair of squirrel tokens thanks to Chatterfang, all pumped by Intangible Virtue, so that's pretty scary. At least there will be plenty of creatures for us to tamp down. And Gilded Lotus gives us more mana. So let's say we play Hilda. I've got four mana left, so I could play Sanctuary. Keep a bird tapped down, so it's going to be a bit harder for them to flash back. And still pay the one to trigger Hilda. Or we can protect her with the boots. So maybe just go Gilded Lotus... Play Hilda, put the boots on it, and then I'll still have Loran's escape up, although we're falling behind on board. At least I can block the squirrel tokens. And then escape also works on artifacts if they try to take one of those out. It's gonna be a Johnny to pump the team. Okay. So now we can actually kill Chatterfang. We fall to nine. Take our turn. Okay, so how do we want to get started? Probably Sanctuary tapping down a bird. Pay one to either draw or I can make a 4-4, four -four, which is probably safer here. Counter on Hilda, pay one, make a 4-4, four -four. and then we want to kill Chatterfang, play Giant Killer, and 
then I could send Hilda at the Jani, and if they double block, we Lawrence escape. And we'll put the bird first. Okay. Don't need Mindstone. And then Giant Killer can hopefully keep tapping stuff to enable Hilda. Fragment Reality is going to get rid of it, sadly. Might be time to sack Hedron Archive. And a Swords deals with our 4-4. Okay, bit of a setback. At least we're back to 13, now 9 life. And a Sentry. Can't quite tap things down now. So let's start by drawing. Could also animate Faceless Haven to just trade for a Squirrel. Although then it can use Ghost Quarter. Unlikely that they want to sack their land here, but we'll see. Ooh, nice Icebind Pillar. That's what we needed. So play it. Uses no mana to tap down this Coral. Could even animate Haven attack and then still tap. That seems potentially worthwhile. And then I kind of force him to use Ghost Quarter. Alright, move to attackers. Hilda goes after a Jenny. Haven goes face. And then before blockers, we want to tap this for snow mana to use Pillar. Tap down the Squirrel. And then I can pay the one to make another 4-4. That opponent does blow up Haven, so I can find a snow island. Okay, and then I can still play farmland. Probably fine to play it now that we have Pillar to keep enabling Hilda. Thalion the Gidrog. Attack with a bird, put us to five. And an Enforcer is not bad either. Okay, so we're not attacking anymore, but can play Enforcer, play Sentry. And then use Pillar during the opponent's turn. To tap down either a bird or a Thalion, the Gidrog monster. Maybe should have done so in upkeep, although they don't have a third white creature for Battle Screech yet. So let's do it now. And then, yeah, probably Thalion, the Gidrog, fall to one here. And plus one counter on the elemental. And then I think we need to dig, so we'll scry to draw. Counterspell, that's a pretty good card, and so is Icy Manipulator. So we'll keep both. Counterspell on top so we can cast it now. Fall to one. But then we should be in control. With three tap effects we can use repeatedly. Take our turn, play Icy, and then opponents at 25. I don't think we're at a spot where we can kill them yet, but we're getting close. So this will tap Thalion the Gidrock monster, and then we can tap Bird, tap Squirrel, can maybe even tap one now if we want to. So let's tap the Squirrel, second so attack with a Sentry. Guess I can also pay two mana with a sentry potentially. And then a plus one counter on sentry itself. And then we'll pay one to make another 4 4 here. And then these could all attack. Could also leave an extra blocker back in case they have removal for uh, one of my two remaining blockers. It's maybe a little safer. 
and then I'm not going to pay. Okay, and then during the opponent's upkeep, I could tap Thal in the Gitrog, or we could wait until beginning of combat. Alright, so now we'll tap this, activate Enforcer on Thal in the Gitrog. Plus one counter on Sentry. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. I see taps the bird, trigger Hilda once again, activate the ability, and next turn we should be able to attack for the win. Very close one here, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Ayula, Queen Among Bears. So there are going to be plenty of creatures for us to tap down. The only concern here is the lack of blue mana. And that's probably reason enough to mulligan. Even though boots would be nice protection for Hilda. Okay, we've got the boots once again, and a good mix of interaction. I'll keep up wash away here. Opponent doesn't play a Eula, so I'm just gonna be patient, not play Mindstone, and next turn I can play Ring, keep up wash away. And we can Dovin's Veto here to make sure we spend our mana. Still missing a tap effect to synergize with Hilda. Oracle of Moldai is a good one. And a time warp is going to be better once we get some of our engines online. So play Mindstone, play Boots. And then probably fine to keep Mindstone untapped in case I need to sacrifice it. Could have also kept up two blue sources in case they destroy Replicating Ring and then play Ayula. Okay, Cavalier of Thorns, her opponent's getting plenty of value without her commander. They milled Nissa as well, which they could get back if Cavalier dies. All right, let's counter Eula, although now they've got so much mana that they can easily replay it. Still worth a shot. And now Emperor can exile Oracle. Okay, so is that a plan? That's all I really get to do this turn. Pona's got a Gnawbone coming up with, yeah, a 5-6 Cavalier. So I could also just uh, wait for them to play Gnawbone, and then I can exile Cavalier instead of Oracle. Can't quite play Hilda and the Wandering Emperor, but that might work out better. At least there's no land on top. Alright, opponent's just gonna go to attackers. Now I could actually ambush Oracle with a 2-2 token, and then still have the minus 2 for Cavalier later. Do the talking. Okay. Mm, there's Ayula. Four mana left. And the Realm Walker naming bears, presumably. And two counters on Ayula. Well, we've got our work cut out for us. Okay, Knots wasn't bad. So let's say we play Hilda, play Knots, then I can still pay the one. Although I wouldn't be able to also equip the Boots, which is probably what we need here, because I'll be able to play Hydra next turn to fight if we don't give Hexproof. Could also time warp, but then I'm not really doing much besides taking up my Wandering Emperor. But maybe that's good enough here. 
just so I can maybe draw land. And then I get to keep my Wandering Emperor in play after using the minus two. Remember your training. Tails end can counter some of the opponent's legendaries. So let's minus two Cavalier. Play Hilda. And then... I could, uh, yeah, equip the boots, keep up. Tails end might be the play. And then next turn we can hopefully start getting value. Would have been a good habit to just uh, leave my blue mana untapped, which is harder for them to interact with than an artifact. So counter Nobone, that worked out. And Ayula can finish off Emperor, that's fine. A replicating ring also getting closer to giving us more mana, and harvesters not bad. Could attack with Hilda and then make a four for a instant speed to potentially ambush a realm walker, and then wait on harvester until we can tap more stuff down with it, potentially transform their commander as well. So Toski resolves. Three mana left for an icon of ancestry. Presumably naming bear. So now I cannot tap down a Eula. A Loron's escape can save us against a fight. So I think that's good enough. And then I'll pay one make an elemental. So we can block the realm walker. And then now I have two things to tap down with Harvester and get more value from Hilda. So I'll pay one. And then maybe scry to draw and make one elemental. Keep lands, a giant killer isn't bad either. And then pay the one. And make an elemental. And then I should be able to attack. If they play Hydra to fight the elemental, we make it indestructible. And then we also get to block a Eula. And the more tapped creatures our opponent has next turn, the more effective Harvester. So X equals 4. Fighting the Elemental. And uh, still happy with a Giant Killer. And a Mirror Shield is next to eventually give Hexproof. Okay, so probably time for Harvester, and then I'll still have a Giant Killer to kill, I'm thinking Ayula. Chop down Ayula. And pass the turn. And then next turn we'll get all our extra mana to sink into a large Nico. Ooh, it's a Tarasque. That's scary. Fights a creature we control. Can still block it. It's not indestructible, is it? Okay. 
Okay, we beat a Tarask. And then it's time for Nico. Probably still want to leave myself the mana to play Giant Killer. So... X equals 10 is probably more than enough. And then I can still sacrifice one token. I guess 9 or 11 would have made more sense if my plan is to play Giant Killer. Don't need Celestis anymore. Ooh, Junkwinder. Don't mind if I do. So I can play Junkwinder. Make a token. And then still tap down the Hydra. Sadly don't have spare mana to sink into Hilda, but next turn we can kind of go off. I guess one creature they can protect with a shield. And there's Ayula. And Omen of the Hunts. Alright, looks like we're in control now. Get to show off the synergy with the Junkwinder. So make a token. Trigger Junkwinder, target Ayula. Pay one to make an elemental, which triggers Junkwinder. Rinse and repeat. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Jiru and Hazoret, so a white-red legendary deck. Our hand is not bad. May or may not have a, a lot of targets for spell peers, but Swords is going to be excellent. And then a sentry can be a repeatable tap effect. Could still potentially use an instant speed tap effect so we can tap down Jiren Hazard before it attacks. For now, don't think we need Cyclonic Rift yet. Just play this tapped. And the monuments I could steal with Scroll of Isildur for a couple turns, or we can just counter it now. Probably a better use of my mana. And play Sentry on three. Fairy Two Circles, also very nice. I think we still go for Sentry here. And then the longer we wait on Scroll of Isildur, the more likely I can combine Chapter 2 with Hilda. Put on the Braid's Sentry. Okay. So I could play Hilda already. It will be shields down on swords, but Jero is unlikely to have haste next turn. So that could work out. And then next turn I can look into Verity Circle or Scroll of Isildur. There's Jero and Hazret. And Giver of Runes is next. Okay, so if I play Scroll, I'm not stealing anything with Chapter 1. So instead I could Swords to Plowshares Jeru now before they get a chance to attack. Play Giver. Play Verity Circle, and then next turn we can start tapping with the 5 mana ability. Don't want them untapping and having a protection spell. And then Hilda can attack. And then if they just play creature, I wouldn't mind a land. Now with Loran, it's a different story. So now we're missing a tap effect. Bolt kills Giver. Celestus is a draw. Alright, I guess we get the scroll going. I guess the problem being a Loran can tap by itself, so then I'm not the one tapping it, so we don't get to trigger Hilda. So that's kind of awkward. For now I get to attack for three. Keep up Cyclonic Rift. And maybe wait for an artifact to show up. 
Okay, that's an artifact. So I can temporarily steal it and equip Hilda. Take two for now. These boots are mine. Put them on Hilda. And attack. So I'm curious to see if our opponent will activate Loran in a response to me tapping it down. Would let us draw a card as well, so I guess that's nice. If our opponent plays a land and then Jiren has a red, they still wouldn't have haste. And our opponent's actually activating a Loran, so they're going to be even further from empty-handed. Okay, do we get to tap down Loran? We do not, so our opponent knows what's up. Oh, they're not allowed to play another creature here. Hang on to Dovin's Veto. They will get the boots back next turn. Is there any point in playing Sheree when we don't get to draw a card? Probably not. And then could activate Celestus. And my own Loran's pretty funny. I guess I could keep it to destroy the boots after it goes back. Yeah, I'll ditch Dovin's Veto. And then a Loran's escape. Probably not needed either. So we will get to draw a card here of Scroll of Isildur. And as a Talpa, Primal Dawn. That one's pretty scary. Luckily, we can keep it tapped down. So no need to bounce it. Finally, have a target. So we get to draw, and then probably just make a 4-4. Crown is another nice tap effect. Okay, we're kind of in business here. So we no longer actually control the boots, so I can move them to the elemental to give it haste. Opponent's going to be able to move them next turn. So I could play Loran to blow up the boots, or we can play Crown and keep up one mana to activate it. And then I'm probably not gonna try and tap down Loran since they would just activate a response and then we don't get to trigger Sheree. But they can now move the Swiftwood Boots to Zetalpa and then I can no longer target it until we Cyclonic Rift, I guess. Or destroy the Boots with Loran. It's a pretty interesting back and forth. There's Jerun Hazret. No haste. Until they try to move the boots, at which point... Okay, interesting, going for Zetalpa here. So that's fine. And then I could pay the one to tap down Loran for them to activate it. Just I can draw with uh, Sheree's ability. Okay, put let it happen. So I can't pay the one for Hilda, but I'm happy to just draw a card. Okay, what's next? Step one, probably destroy the boots. Okay. 
And then step two maybe to tap Jeru and has rats. Get to draw and make another 4-4. Four, four. Find an Enforcer, nice answer to Zatalpa. So I can play Midnight Clock, play Enforcer, kill Jaren Hazret for one mana to keep up Cyclonic Rifts. And attack. So we've got some nice synergies going. Zatalpa does have uh, Vigilance, I believe, yep. So that means we can tap it down in our turn to enable all our synergies once again. So the opponent's creatures having Vigilance can actually be an advantage. Okay, Elishnorn is gonna kill Enforcer and Loran. That's fine. I think an overloaded Cyclonic Rift is still gonna end the game here. We'll take quite the beating. So yeah, I'm happy with my decision of keeping Cyclonic Rift over Dovin's Veto. Didn't see too many non-creature spells in the meantime. Take our turn. Okay, maybe tap down Zatalpa first in case they're holding a protection spell, although overloaded rift gets around any hexproof tricks they might have. And then I get to pay the one. And uh, let's cry to and draw. The fairy, I see both great. All right, and then uh, probably time to end the game. But I think even without Rift, we probably would have found a way to win with all the extra card draw. All right, sweet. Hilda for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing five color Omnath. And our hand seems okay. Loran likely to blow up an opposing artifact. And then we've got both Crown as well as Frost Titan as repeatable tap effects. Turn to Guild Globe. That one is not really worth destroying. So I could already play Hilda. If it gets removed, so be it. Sure. If it survives, then we can already enable Hilda next turn. The alternative was just to play the crown. It's going to be a Celestus, which we can destroy. And play Cold Steel Heart on blue. Okay. So just waiting for opponent to present the creatures. I'm hoping they run out Omnath. be a Beseech is a mirror without bargain, so they're not uh, sacking the Guild Globe. A Loran's escape could be quite fitting here, with a Loran in play and Hilda has something to protect. Frost Titan can also tap opposing lands down, but it would be shields down on uh, Loran's escape. Then I don't mind tapping Loran to draw, in case we can hit a land drop here. Because then I could maybe play Titan and keep up Escape. Now we've got a Memory Lapse instead. Okay, so I'll play Crown, keep up Memory Lapse, and Loran's Escape. Supreme Verdict. We cannot counter, but we can escape. Protect Hilda. And a Muta Vault. Not a bad follow up. Let's me play Frost Titan and Muta Vault, add a few threats to the board. Because their opponent's probably reluctant to put any creature in play when we have a crown that they know about. Could also cycle Plunge into Winter, just so we get a little bit deeper into the deck. Okay, play Muta Vault, play Titan. 
And then I'll tap down command tower. Hit for three. It's gonna be an arcane signet next. And a wilderness reclamation to untap all their lands. So I'm assuming they got Supreme Verdict with Besiege. Although the fact that they didn't just cast it right away is kind of surprising. So maybe they just got something more expensive that they didn't cast yet. Get to take our turn. Animate Mutavolt attack and see what happens. Go to Memory Lapse for protection. And we'll tap down probably Arcane Signet now. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Velomachus, Lorehold. And uh, yeah, our hand seems fine. We've got a repeatable tap effect. Idle for a bit of ramp. And then on the draw, land taxes, pretty effective. So we don't need to worry about hitting our land drops. One mana for three basic lands, that's a bargain. I'm gonna have to discard to hand size here. Probably should have discarded Island since we have Midnight Clock to make more blue. Okay, get three more lands. I can get my planes now. This is also thinning out the deck. So, next up... Could play... Midnight Clock plus Pacification Array. Just want to get to a point where we can play Hilda and uh, immediately activate it, basically. Still pretty far from 7 mana Velomachus. Invasion can probably exile Wandering Emperor here. But we've got 6 mana next turn, so we could still cast it. Just that the minus 2 is not very effective against uh, Vigilance 5-5. Five five. So they actually exiled Pressure Point. Can also use Array in the opponent's upkeep, potentially, to tap down Ornithopter. Curse names Hilda. So you could also use Emperor now to exile Ornithopter. Keep thinning out the deck. So Land Tax drew us 9 cards. All lands, admittedly, but still. So, what's next? Hilda costs 6 mana, still potentially 2 turns away from Velomachus. Could just use Emperor to tap down Ornithopter. The only problem with getting rid of their only creature is that we may not have a creature to tap down to get value from Hilda. So maybe going with Teferi is uh, fine here, and then I can still use Array to tap down Ornithopter. Okay. And then I'll use Array now. So they can't use the mana in their main phase. Could have tapped a little bit better last turn to still play Sentinel or just wait to play my basic land to see what one mana spell we drew. So our opponent's got five mana, which means we get to trigger land tax again. Now rejoice. And I'm happy getting these basics out of the deck, so we're more likely to draw spells with author card draw effect. Okay, runic shot, a clean answer to the ornithopter. 
and then Teferi can keep drawing. Could also minus on Curse to let me play Hill down the cheap. Okay, so let's take care of Ornithopter. Maybe we can scry as well. And I don't think Velomancus is gonna successfully attack this game. Worn Power Stone for ramp isn't bad. Could see the benefit of a Loron's escape, but maybe we can just dig towards a counter spell instead. And I could still animate Guardian Idol to attack. Okay. Opponent's gonna pass. Take our turn. Alliant Tax triggers yet again. Could decline if we want to draw the Worn Power Stone. It's probably a good reason. So I'll play it. Teferi can plus first. We need to move quickly. Vito was a nice pickup. Now we also have to keep our Midnight Clock in mind, so that's going to refresh our hand at some point. I'll keep up a bit more mana so I can deploy Wandering Emperor. Okay, pass it back. And then we can just tap down Velomachus before it attacks. Shatter Skull Smashing seems like a good target for Dovin's Veto. And our opponent has seen enough, pretty close to ultimating Teferi. And yeah, got to see Land Tax in action, a new addition from the Wiles of Eldraine Enchanting Tales. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kozilak the Great Distortion, so colorless ramp deck. And our hand's not bad. Junkwinder can be a lot of fun to combine with Hilda, and then Counterspell to counter their 10 mana Eldrazi. Next turn play Hilda against a colorless deck, there's not much removal we need to take into account. May not see a lot of early creatures, so... May not have a lot to tap down and use Hilda's ability. Yeah, Firemind Vessel is a good one. So may as well scry here. Don't think I need Cold Steel Heart, or do I? I think I still bought him. Just drawing a land would be kind of the same here. This only enchants creatures. Would be fun to tap down their artifact otherwise. Ooh, Mightstone and Weakstone. Yeah, probably have to counter that. Would kill Hilda. And then also give them two mana for artifacts. It doesn't cast Kozilek, admittedly. But still. And an Ornithopter. Okay, so now we actually have a creature we can try to tab down. So I could play Bitter Chill, pay the one, make a 4 4 token, which discounts Junkwinder. And then still play Sentry. So that's pretty good. And we still have a River's Rebuke we can cast before they get to 10 mana to bounce all those artifacts back. Paradox Engine, yeah, that's probably worth bouncing. Hope they can't fully combo off here. They've got access to 4 mana. If they have another cheap artifact, they can maybe end up casting Kozilek. Sculpting Steel. Yeah, a copy Vessel. I guess it still enters tapped at least. Ornithopter as Hexproof. And the Fairy the draw. Yeah, I don't feel bad casting River's Rebuke against a Paradox Engine, so let's just go for it. Sadly, can't pay the one to draw with Bitter Chill. But 
but now if they were to replay Ornithopter, I can pay the mana for Sentry. If they play Paradox Engine, I can just minus three to Fairy. So there's Paradox Engine. And I'm not gonna mess around with it. The Fairy minus. That's gone. And then we should be able to cross the finish line next turn. Alright, sweet. So yeah, we got to see our blue-white Hilda deck in action. And overall, I'm pretty impressed by what the deck is capable of. Getting to see some cool synergies like Junkwinder, getting to tap multiple creatures down in one turn is quite satisfying. Of course, a deck can be quite weak against opposing decks that don't present any creatures, so like a pure control deck that relies on Planeswalkers to win the game might make it difficult for Hilda to really do anything. So that's of course part of it, but against most creature decks I've been having a good time. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.